Well, for people living in a Cali, water shutdowns and boil advisories have become part of everyday life. Recently, the city told residents they can't wash their vehicles because of low water levels in the city's only reservoir. The federal government has announced a disaster mitigation adaptation fund that's going to provide $214 million to help, but that might not be enough. Joining us with a closer look at the water crisis is Adam Ariak Lightstone, a member of the Legislative Assembly of Nunavut. Welcome. Uh, thank you for, very much for having me here, here today. Uh, um, the water crisis that we are facing. Yeah, Adam, can you describe for us what kind of struggles residents are facing right now in terms of accessing safe drinking water? Well, um, you've you've gave a, a very good summary. Uh, you know, we we all know that water is a necessity of life and a, and a fundamental human right. Um, and for years uh, here in Akalwi and across Nunavut, we've uh, enjoyed our pristine Arctic waters and at times uh, taken it for granted. Um, but that all changed in uh, in 2018 um, when the city had to. Uh, declare its first local state of emergency due to a uh, water shortage, the water in the reservoir becoming dangerously low and uh, un unable to meet the, the supply demands for the upcoming winter. Uh, Adam, how are residents accessing water, especially because there are do not consume orders? Um, yeah, so uh, we have a number of issues. Um, not enough insufficient water supply, but we also have an aging uh, water distribution system with uh, breaks and leaks uh, and costly repairs ha occurring regularly. And uh, every time that uh, the city digs up uh, a water line to repair it, it's followed by uh, boil water advisory. So we get them quite often here in a and uh, in addition, uh, we also have issues uh, with our water treatment facility. Um, in 2021, 20, uh, we uh, had to have uh, declare uh, a territorial state of emergency uh, due to hydrocarbons being found in our water system. Uh, and that uh, led to a do not consume advisory, which is much more significant than a boil water advisory. And uh, that uh, that state of emergency lasted for nearly two months before uh, the issue was addressed and we were able to uh, safely drink our water again. Yeah, Adam, you've pointed out there are issues with filtration. There's issues with water treatment. And then the problem that you and I talked about in 2021 and 2022, after those traces of fuel were found, were found in the water, water, have there been any improvements in the last two years? Or is this a problem that's just getting worse? Um, well, there have been some improvements. Uh, the water treatment facility um, has been uh, fixed. Uh, the, the water treat the holding uh, cells, um, which were originally bypassed, have just been cleared for reuse. So our, our water, water treatment facility is back up and running, and that was that was just recently that that was completed. Uh, however, the the water shortage and the aging uh, distribution system. Uh, is an ongoing issue, and we're still facing uh, water uh, shortage uh, to date. And uh, the federal government did uh, recently uh, announce uh, $214 million through the da Disaster Mitigation Fund in 2022 to help address our water woes. But um, it uh, it is going to be quite some time until that project uh, even commences having to go through several regulatory processes before planning and construction can resume. So we're looking at uh, likely three years until uh, our, our water crisis is resolved. Three years until the water crisis is resolved. What do residents do in the meantime? Um, well, um, we still have a number of um, water uh, consumption measures in place, uh, unable to, there's a car wash ban on municipal water and we're asking residents, or all residents have been asked to be more water wise and conserve their water. Um, but it is um, having a, a ripple effect 
Uh, Iqaluit uh, is not just facing a water crisis, but also a housing crisis. Um, and there's a tremendous amount of, of homeless, near homeless, and overcrowding uh, here in Iqaluit. And the situation is uh, only going to worsen in, in, until we get this water crisis uh, issue resolved. Uh, we're unable to develop land or uh, build uh, large uh, residential uh, buildings until such time that uh, the city is confident that that would not cause undue stress on our water uh, system. Adam, you've really laid out for us so clearly the ripple effects of the water crisis that's happening there and how it's just the beginning of a, of a chain effect. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Anne-Marie. And, and, and it's not, no, it's not deniable uh, that all of our water issues are connected to, to climate change. And I, I just would like to encourage all governments, every level of government uh, across the world to make the investments necessary to reduce our CO2 emissions and in order for us to hit uh, our targets. Well, we are hearing that from people in every province and now territories as well. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.